Hello and welcome back to NorCal 715. So today I have hot on the bench this Magnavox VHS player and DVD recorder model ZV457MG9. Now this unit was brought in to me, the cover's already off. But before I remove that cover, I'm going to test it and see if I can figure out what's going on and why this customer brought this in to me to be repaired. So I'm going to plug it in. Hit the power button. Let me dim the lights. It has a display. It shows power on, then it goes right off. And briefly on the display it says load. So right off the bat, I'm suspecting a power supply problem. I saw these lights light up over here just for a second. Let's pull the top. The power supply resides under this DVD recorder player assembly. So I'm going to have to remove this completely out of the way. I suspect maybe a bad capacitor, maybe a high ESR cap. So let's move this out of the way and see what we get. So I'm going to start by just removing the front panel. These three tabs. I can get them all to cooperate at the same time. One on the side here. Hard to see on the camera, but tabs on the bottom. There's a ribbon con connector right here. Let's remove that just for these video input jacks. Now I'm just going to zip these screws out. Remove the frame. And if this one has a HDMI output on the back, well, screws already gone out of it. So I don't need to take that out. Customer already did that for me. Then we'll just gently lift up on this and see what cables I need to remove. Obviously this one. About a five pin connector. This one goes down to the main circuit board. This one to the main board. And the DVD player is separate now. There's the power supply, nothing labeled. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull the power supply out of the unit. Remove the one connector right here. Release the cord. And I'm gonna lift the power supply completely out. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the HACO, heat it up, and remove one pin of every capacitor on here, and we'll do an ESR test. Okay, so I've went ahead and made a mark around the positive lead of each capacitor on here that I'm going to unsolder. I normally unsolder the positives. The majority of them rely on a common negative. So this is the brand new Hacko FR301. It's been working great. I've had it for about a month now. It's awesome. I'd recommend getting one if you can. So I'm gonna make sure they're all broke loose completely. Just by doing a little wiggle on all of them, make sure the leads wiggle. Make sure I didn't miss any of them. There we go. So let's get the ESR meter. Okay, so in addition to circling the positive leads, I've also went ahead and wrote the values of the capacitors next to them so I can do a quick determination as to whether they're good or bad. So let's zero my meter out, and we'll start over here. 47 microfarad. Close to zero, I'm good with that. 470 should be zero. Yep. 100, 0, 
22. Yeah, a little less than one ohm, I'm good. 3300 should be zero. Yep. A 220. Yeah, that one's kind of suspect right there. 3300. Zero, good. 220. One ohm. I'm very suspect of these two capacitors right here, right off the bat. I'm not happy with those readings. 470. Zero, that's good. 10 microfarad, I expect like maybe 2 ohms. Eh, 3 ohms, just under 3. So that's okay. And I think I checked this one, 470, that's good. Now over here we've got a 220, this is the main AC input filter cap. Eh, probably a quarter ohm, that's good. 10 microfarad, once again, 2, 3 ohms, I'm okay. Yeah, 4 ohms, that's the snubber capacitor. That's mainly only used in startup. These two twenties are very suspect to me. Let's see if I got a couple of them. So yes, I do have a couple of two twenties at six point three volts. Let's go ahead and test them. Uh, about a half an ohm. A meter still zero. That's good. It was close to zero. Let's find if I have one more. So I've just got a general capacitor assortment of 220s here. 220 at 10. At 10. 10. If I can get it out of the drawer here. Another 220 at 6.3. That one's about a quarter ohm. I'm good with that. Make sure I get the other good one. Yeah, about a tenth of an ohm. So let's put those in there and see what happens. Check them again. Yeah, about a half an ohm. i get my meter on there. And about one ohm. So let's go ahead and replace those guys. Alright, so I've got them in place here. I'm just going to solder them in. Next, we'll go ahead and solder back all the other leads. Looks like I got them all. Let's cross our fingers and put it back in and see what happens. Okay, so I've got the board completely out of the unit with the mechanism attached. And I'm primarily interested in these capacitors in this neighborhood right here. There's three little regulators here. So I've got them marked here. 3300, 47, 100, 2200, 100. 100 and a 470 right here. So let's zero my meter. So the third 300. Good, zero. 47. Should be about half an ohm to one ohm. It's about three and a half to 100. It's about two and a half ohms. 2200. Zero. 470, maybe up to half an ohm, zero, the 100, uh, half an ohm, eh, it's suspect, the other 100, ooh, that's bad, five and a half ohms, got to put a mark there, I didn't like this 47, mark that one, 
And this 100 at 2.5 ohms. Not good. So let's change those three caps. One hundred at six point three, one hundred at sixteen, one hundred at six point three, and forty seven at sixteen. Okay, so let's do a comparison old to new. This is a one hundred at six point three, about two and a half ohms. New capacitor is half an ohm, forty seven at sixteen, about three and a quarter, three and a half ohms, half an ohm. 100 at 6.3, 6 ohms, new one is half an ohm, the last is a 100 at 16, about 3 quarters of an ohm, new one is very close to zero. So let's put those in and see what happens. Got them in the board, just got to solder them in now. All right, they're all in, and we'll trim them. All trimmed off, ready to go. Get the power supply here. Plug it in. Now it's just gonna sit here, out of the base, and we'll see what happens. It's different. Different is good. Let's plug the DVD player into it and see if it's waiting for an input. Look at that, it's staying on. It's trying to read the disc. It's reading the disc. All right, we may have a fix. So let's get it hooked up to a monitor and see if we have any video now. So I'm gonna to have to do this part handheld, but let's go ahead and power the unit up. I've got it connected to a video monitor right now. It's reading. Let's get to the monitor. It's loading, still loading. There's the table of contents. So let's go ahead and hit play and see if we get video. There it goes. And it's playing. And I heard sound. Let me skip titles. Play. Let's go a little farther forward. Let's get some video on the screen here. There we go. Play. Okay. So next we'll put it all back together and see if it still works. Okay, so I got it all back together, and to my surprise, the cylinder does not run on the VCR. So let's take up the tape that it spilled. Try it one more time. Give it a little spin. Nothing. So, the cylinder motor on this model has a drive chip on the capstan motor. 
and he gets a power supply from well the main power supply so let's try to flip this thing over gingerly and see if the main power supply is supplying voltage to the cylinder slash capstan motor so I've got it upside down here I'm gonna try to put a tape in very carefully I'm on ground at the power supply this is where the capstan motor gets its voltage 18 volts I did not see it waver but it didn't start to run at all so next I'm gonna to have to unsolder all these connections and pull the mechanism out and see if I can find something with that okay so I've got the board upside down I'm gonna to have to unsolder the capstan cylinder motor connector this connector actually goes to the ace head audio control erase and this connector right here goes to the cylinder uh, transformer the rotating transformer from the cylinder heads the video heads uh, and then it goes into the amplification circuits from here and demodulating all this done in, in this one chip right here so the best thing I've seen to uh, used to unsolder these ribbon cables is just a regular soldering iron. There's really nothing to it on these things. Uh, usually what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a little bit of extra solder to these connections. And I'm just going to roll it across kind of quickly. I'm trying to keep them molten for just a second longer than they normally would be. And then I'm just going to start with a screwdriver and work my way across. This one sticks up a little bit, so I think it's actually going to be quite easy to do. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and desolder the ribbon cable in the same fashion. It's worked out very well so far. These are quite sensitive of heat. Chances are this thing's not going to be either completely repaired or they won't even care about it. I think I lost a pin. Yeah, that's the reason the space is there. I lost a pin. Well, I can go ahead and peel some of this back. And last but not least, get those out of there real easily. Now yeah, they're okay, it'll tack right back down. So I'm just going to go ahead and zip these screws out. Everything is unsoldered. All right, all free. Now I see the uh, components. There's a couple resistors and a zener diode right here. They've been running a little bit warm. Yeah, just look at the circuit here and see. Always 18 plus VG. It goes to pin 12 of this connector that goes in the cylinder slash capstan motor. The ohmmeter meter out here. Put it on diode and just see if we read anything across these diodes. Good forward junction. It's not shorted. Not shorted and good forward junction so those zener diodes both test okay i don't know about their forward voltage but in this application i don't think it's uh too critical well, let's look closely at the capstan motor all right so i just pulled the retainer just a little plastic ring that holds the uh, capstan shaft in place so i'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and pull the capstan motor out of the way we can take a look at that circuit board down here and there's the drive I see something on that chip right there. I got a flashlight on it. She might have let the smoke out. There's definitely a little divot in that chip. Yeah, there's definitely a dimple on that. So I'm going to end up calling my customer and see if he's just interested in uh, whether he wants to repair this or not. Put the money into repairing the VCR portion of it. I completely have a new end prepared on that ribbon cable with no broken connectors. So I'm just going to put it back together. And the customer did not want it repaired, but I want to keep it as original as I possibly can, just in case one day it gets repaired. Well, at least we got the DVD player going. Okay, so it's all back together. The power is on. You can't see it, but the DVD light is lit. So I'm going to open the tray. We'll put this disc back in it and see if it reads. So just for the heck of it, I looked at the bottom of this disc. Hard to see it on the camera, but it is extremely dirty, which makes this a challenge to read. So if this can read it, then it's doing a really good job. I mean, it is just absolutely filthy. Scratches and fingerprints all over it. Disc in, close.
It's raining. So I'm going to move the camera now. Disc is reading. Let's look at the monitor now. Loading. Loading, almost done. And it read the table of contents. So let's hit play. And it's playing. So the DVD still works after all it's been through. So for the heck of it, let's put a tape in it and see what happens. So the disc is still playing. We'll stop it. It stopped on the screen. The disc is still spinning. Let's switch it to VCR mode. I have a tape pre-recorded. Let's see what happens. The cylinder starts. That's a good sign. And it loads completely. And it's playing. And we even have video. And it stopped. What's going on? The power light went off. Turn it back on. It's on. And it shoots the tape back out. Put it back in. We're going to hit stop this time when it loads. Stop. Now I'm going to go to fast forward right here. And it stopped. The lights went out. It retracted the tape back into the cartridge. I turn it back on. Power on. And it ejects the tape. I have a suspicion, just based on what's going on, because it does play. Tape in. Over here on the monitor, it shows SP and the play logo. And it does play. Little distortion, but that's just the monitor versus VHS. And then it stops again. Power back on. And it ejects. So what I suspect is going on here is there's an infrared emitter LED right here and then over here supply sensor and a take-up sensor right here. In addition to that this little arm right here shoots through this wheel and as this take-up turns there's an infrared receiver through that hole right there. And it wants to see the breakup of light on off, on off, on off as this thing turns to make sure the tape is actually being pulled back into the cartridge. So as filthy as this thing was, I suspect that we need to take this off, one screw, holding it on right there. It's working as far as the take up goes because every time I block this, watch this loading motor over here, I'm gonna block it, it tries to load. Then it doesn't. Block this side, tries to load, then it retracts. I'm gonna block the left side again. So right there, that tells me that the infrared LED emitter under here is working just fine and that both the receivers on this side and over here on this side are working just fine. So I'm going to pull this mechanism off and I'm going to clean with a Q-tip the tip of the receiver as well as all of this unit to make sure the light passes correctly. Okay, with the power off, I have a Phillips tip screwdriver. I'm just going to remove this screw right here. And then pick the whole thing up out of there with the screw. Next, I'm just going to take a paper towel 
And I'm going to wipe this portion off, which is the input for the LED emitter. And then wipe off this, which is like a prism that passes the light through. And we'll clean the top as well. All good. Let's get a Q-tip and we'll go down through that hole and we'll clean the emitter and the receiver at the same time. Okay, so I've got a Q-tip and I'm gonna put some glass cleaner on it. Clean the emitter. And it won't fit. Uh-oh, gear came off. That's not good. So I'm going to pull some of the Q-tip material off of here. See if it'll fit now. There it is. Clean the top of the receiver off. Hold that gear down so it doesn't come off again. Wipe it off so it's dry. All good. Hard to see, but off camera, I will take and wipe these off as well. There we go, all clean. Put the screw back in. Got my tape ready, power on, tape in. Tape playing. It's still playing, that's awesome. I think we may have a solid fix. So stop. Last time I fast forward, it shut off in about five seconds. Fast forward. Oh, that's awesome. It's working great. Stop. Eject. So next I'm going to put the support bar back on, line up that peg right there, line up the peg there, now we'll snap the front plate back on, got to plug in this video input connector, front jack PCB is this listed, awful short. There we go, all plugged in. I'm gonna lift this up just slightly. Now I wanna make sure the door is open when I close the, or when I uh, place the front. It's all on there. So let's go ahead and stop it and eject the tape. Make sure the door opens so the tape comes out. Perfect. Play is great. Stop. Let's rewind it. Make sure it doesn't shut off. So it works great forward and reverse. Fast forward and rewind. Let me pause it till it gets to the end. Make sure it actually sees this optical sensor right here in rewind. So the leader on this tape is crystal clear, which allows the infrared light to pass. And once it sees light on this infrared receiver, it's supposed to slam on the brakes and stop the tape. So I'm gonna pause it until it just gets there. Okay, almost there. 
very close. When it stops, this should be clear and that should see the infrared light. Absolutely perfect. And it's done. Now that it's all running, we'll put the screws back in it. To kind of hold or brace the mechanism. This one's gonna be kind of hard to get to. It's under the auto head cleaner. Let me shut the power off. So let's put the top on it and find some screws that the customer had lost. All right, so I've got some extra screws I'll use for the case. All right, let's clean this thing up a little bit. Man, it was absolutely filthy. I certainly hope you enjoyed this video on repairing the Magnavox DVD recorder slash VCR. I'm pretty confident the recorder is going to work just fine at this point. I'm not even going to test it right now. Besides, it won't record off a Macrovision encoded tape. If this video has made an impact in your life, please consider making a donation on my YouTube homepage or at paypal.me slash NorCal715. Remember, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill and out of the recycle bin. You can follow me on Twitter at NorCal715. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.